Welcome back to Daily Flash, I'm Raisa Pascal. Recently, actor Chris Hemsworth learned from a genetic test that he has a heightened risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. With this information, he has decided to take a break from acting. Here to answer some questions about genetic testing is clinical pharmacist Dr. Ani Rastamian. Hi, Dr. Ani, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really enjoying my time here with you. Oh, excellent. This is a very timely conversation, so I think we can jump in. There's a lot to cover. First, maybe you could tell us how important is genetic testing? You know, excellent question to start. Um, as a clinical pharmacist with my background in nutrigenomics and pharmacogenomics consultant, I could say that sometimes this test can be life-saving, but sometimes they're just uh, informing the patient about the, the risk predisposition, not that the disease is actually going to happen. So this is a good preventative uh, test, uh, thanks to advances in science and medicine and precision medicine world, uh, that we have the opportunities now to test our patients to see their you know, disease predisposition uh, longer term. So this is important for um, us to realize that we're living in a day and age that we can get more information about our genetics than 10, 15 years ago. So genetic testing is quite important, but when it's actually prudently used, also important. Excellent. And then if like Chris Hemsworth, say we find out that we do have a heightened risk of developing a certain genetic disease, what should we do with that information? As we mentioned, Chris, he's taking a break from acting. What, 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 what's the next steps? You know, great point. Um, I always tell my clients and patients, number one thing we should do is not to panic. Number one thing is do not panic. Because the testing that was actually done, that APOE gene, is actually a risk predisposition, gene risk um, uh, testing, rather than determinant disease, right? Determining the disease uh, actually happening. So not to panic now that we know that we may have a higher risk compared to other uh, people to develop Alzheimer's disease, which is absolutely debilitating, you know, neurodegenerative uh, disease related to dementia. Uh, now we know that how lifestyle can be very important in tackling those uh, you know, risks. And actually, lifestyle here comes to play. And extremely important to take those measures in stress management, nutrition, sleep, everything comes to play now. And then it's good. A patient sometimes get confused and are very scared to find out they have the risk gene. But again, this is not a routinely ordered test and we should not panic rather than be informed and change our health I'm glad you touched on um, you know, what we can do internally for our health. I would love to go a little more into that. You're talking about um, exercise and, and diet. Talk, talk about some of those things that we can do on a daily basis to keep our physical health in check. Yes, absolutely. And um, as many um, scientists and um, great minds in our epigenetics field where we learn and study how lifestyle and environment influences those genes to turn on and off. And truly, we all may carry those uh, disease-causing genes, but what lifestyle can do is turn the uh, risk e either off or on and actually help us you know, cope with um, either the life, you know, long progression of it. So in terms of lifestyle, I can't emphasize this enough, how important it is to try to live a meaningful life with healthier nutrition, exercise, and just try to focus on, on that area of our life in great details, right? Um, not only just learning from uh, others how they do it, but actually looking at your genetics. What, are, what exercise routine is good for me? What nutrition is good for me? Do I have the weight gain gene? Uh, do I have the diabetes gene? Do I have the Alzheimer's disease gene? So looking from that perspective, we're actually uh, approaching ourselves from a personalized standpoint where we actually know what works for us and what doesn't. But lifestyle can make wonders in terms of you know, tackling those you know, disease predisposition areas and actually making us more prone to be healthier for a long time. So very important, stay healthy, get exercise. I want to get a little bit more into the science of the genetics, if that's okay. When I think of genetics, I think of like, you know, my siblings, my parents, my cousins. If I were to find out that I, I was predisposed to some type of, you know, issue or health issue, would I need to let my siblings know, let, let my cousins know, tell my everyone in the Pascal clan to get checked? Like, how does that work? Or do I just kind of worry about myself? 
You know, we're largely the same. That's actually a great question, Gabrota. We're largely the same as humans, right? But we're all really different. There have been many twin studies done that uh, one twin has carried the, let's say, the Alzheimer's disease gene. The other one has not. So it really is to focus on what you, who you are personally based on your genetics, your lifestyle, your environment, and your nutrition. But of course, genetics also plays a big role in that in terms of looking into your family history. If in terms of let's, if we talk about Alzheimer's disease, if there's a strong family history of a parent having the Alzheimer's disease, then you may have a heightened risk of developing it. There's many genes that we test in our, you know, in our practice. Excellent. This is such great advice, Dr. Ani. Thank you for joining us today. For those of you at home, if you would like more information, of course, you can visit DrAniRastamian.com. Thank you so much. This is great information.